hi there guys and um congratulations on your your beautiful performances in of an age thank you, thank you James. nice to meet you great to meet you too i was sort of broken and by this film and then healed <laughs> both <laughs> Alan Goran and you know and um i felt like i needed a good a good hug and um yeah did you get it uh not well not straight away afterwards no because <laughs> i was wandering around times square and then had to go to another movie movie but i did eventually yes when i went back and told my husband all about it um so taking you sort of way back what was your each of your initial reactions to reading uh goran's screenplay for the film and what, why was it something that you wanted to invest your time into so um maybe uh Tom. um uh i remember reading it i was in lockdown in sydney back in Australia and I remember reading it and I remember reading it like in full and then telling my agents like this is brilliant I love it and I want to be a part of this but I think what sold sold it to me was they sent us his director's breakdown and they sent us a mood reel um, on Vimeo and Goran's breakdown like to me is what sealed the deal and it was it was specifically when he mentioned um how he always thought that like great cinema or, or, or great times in your life came from places where you're not based. So he gave examples of like, you know, um, places in Wong Kar Wai films. So he was like, I always thought of these stories, these grandiose stories coming out of these like, um, you know, fantastical um, places in the world. And he said, and then I, when I changed my thought and decided like these stories actually exist in you know, maybe your day-to-day -day life if you live somewhere that's not as glamorous as those areas. And, you know, I'm from a, a relatively small area south of Sydney, um, a town called Wollongong. And I remember growing up, like, I definitely felt like, you know, there was always life happening elsewhere. So that definitely resonated with me. So when I read that after reading the script, I was just like, you know, it just instantly just felt really connected to it. Yes. So that was definitely for me. Yeah, and I think because Australia is such a, it's essentially a big island and it's quite remote, it can feel like things are happening elsewhere, can't it? You know, if you're- Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, and, and Elias, how about for yourself? Well, I, I'm from Melbourne myself, so like that, I definitely have a strong connection in that sense. But for me, um, when reading a script, it's more just about the feeling I get from it. And like, I, I take it as how like the audience would, would feel. So I don't know, I mean, I just, um, I really had an emotional connection to it. and. Um, yeah, especially I like the character arc and with, especially with the time jump, it was just, um, yeah. And, uh, Goran compared it to a film, uh, called Moonlight that, um, that was recommended that I'd watched and I watched that and that was just like a really powerful film. And I just, it was just something I really wanted to be a part of. And I, I did, I looked into some of what Goran had done and I was really looking forward to working with him. Yeah. Yes, I can see that because a lot of that is the between the connection between two people and then also the the, the time jump as well. And um, there, there's so much going on in that first car scene uh, between the two of you. I wonder what your approach was to that and how um, what what kind of atmosphere maybe Goran set for it because it's very intimate and how mm. open he was to your own ideas. He told me that he kept the sort of the camera um, sort of running. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, even after the sort of the dialogue had finished. So just give me a little bit of an insight into creating that really, um, it's a bit beautiful scene. Yeah. I think that, I don't know, about, I kind of don't want to speak for Elias, but I think that it definitely felt like it was, it did feel like it was early on in the shoot when we shot those first moments where they meet each other. Um, so we're still quite nervous on set and you're still trying to gauge how Goran likes to work. You know, he doesn't like to take two hours to block and to light and to set up. It's it's, you know, however you're feeling where your character should be, he'll be like, if you feel great, let's just start rolling. Let's just shoot a rehearsal. He put a lot of trust in us. Mm. Um, and at first it was a little bit nerve wracking, um, especially cause like coming out of uh, COVID lockdowns, I hadn't worked in a little while. So like just jumping straight on set and the director just handing you all this like trust and responsibility. It was a bit overwhelming at first, but we, we kind of just rolled with it and made it work. I think you can, but, I, but like even on top of that, like you, you're able to sort of harness it and use it, right? Because I mean, in that first moment, there's definitely those fluttery feelings of something in the air. And I think it was, if anything, it was just useful. Yeah. Yes. 
And I, I love, like I was saying, that there's so much going on because it's so much more than just physical attraction. Because um, yeah. they're at different places in their in their lives in terms of um, you know being comfortable with their sexuality. And I think there's a recognition in each of them uh, of different things. Maybe for uh, Elias, for your character, sort of looking and thinking, well, I could maybe hope to be like that in a few years. And you, you know, maybe for Tom, your character, sort of saying, oh, that's maybe where I was whatever those that, sort of the, like I say there's there's so much um so much there um that's really me talking I don't know if you want to say <laughs> add anything to that oh definitely everything you said was I mean I feel spot on yeah, yeah. and uh, as you mentioned there's the time jump now when I was watching the film so it goes from 1999 to 2010 I felt sure that you'd had at least like six months or maybe a year or something <laughs> yeah, between. Yeah. Just, just because you, you know really felt like such a such a different time period but apparently it was just a few days so you could grow a little bit more facial hair um so what was that um that, that experience like sort of getting to revisit these characters like a decade on um but in real life you as actors just a couple of days later <laughs> a lot of it for me was just more about how I would hold myself I felt um like I, I actually felt a lot more comfortable playing the older stuff than I did the younger because it was more um, the vulnerability and the insecurity at the start uh, that was a little bit a little bit hard to harness at first. Um, I actually because we filmed all the younger stuff first, yeah. So uh, in my instance, I had to lose a lot of quite a bit of weight because um, with with the older 2010 uh, part of the film, that's actually my natural weight. So I had to lose quite a bit of weight. So I had a little bit more time, but with the five days, we only had five, six days in between. Five days, right. So did you hit the gym then? <laughs> well, we couldn't because um, that was actually at the very end of the lockdowns. Oh, we, lockdown, right. we couldn't risk, um, you know, public spaces and everything. So we were yeah. all in our little social bubble. Mm. Um, so I was just doing what I can in the apartment and just eating a lot. Right. James, <laughs> and just, in case you're, just in case you're wondering, that was my natural buffness as well in the yeah. 2010. <laughs> just in case you're wondering. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I obviously would look like I hit the gym as well, but just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and uh, we have to talk about the dance sequence because um, we meet your character, Elias, when he's doing sort of one side of a rumba, like the solo, solo. solo and have you got a, a dance background or was no. that. You know, no, we just, we had a really good choreographer, Lauren Drago. She, um, I worked with her extensively for a very long time leading up to that. Um, I'd say the garage dance was a quite a bit more difficult because we had to do it as though um, Hattie's character was there, but she wasn't. So it was, it was kind of like I had to play the other part in a sense. So that was, that was quite, quite a challenge, but yeah, don't ask me to do it now because <laughs> that's that's long <laughs> gone. <laughs> well, uh, Elias, Tom, thanks so much. Great to chat to you about this, and I say congratulations again on really uh, beautiful film. It's um, very very meaningful. I wrote down in my notes um, an instant queer classic. So, uh... <laughs> oh, perfect. Thank you, thank you, James. That's very so very sweet. Okay, thanks very much. Bye, guys. See you, mate. Bye. Bye. Bye.